Brian Sloper's Real Estate Radio, the most important hour of radio every Monday on 1580 The Big Talker. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. For those of you who don't know, Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to keeping it current, enhancing your lifestyle, and building the Washington, D.C. Metro's marketplace and credit markets one home at a time. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice. That's my message, and I'll be delivering it every Monday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on 1580 The Big Talker. And I want to remind you that if you ever have any questions, real estate or credit related, you can call me offline, and I will personally assist you. It's 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. So some topics for today, I'm going to elaborate on quantitative easing and what it means to our economy and what it means to the housing market. We're going to dive into some inflation numbers, we're going to get into some housing numbers, uh, and just a few interesting articles that I've also pulled throughout the week. Joining me on our panel is Scott McDonald, broker owner of Remax Chantilly, or Remax Gateway rather, in Chantilly. Uh, how are you doing today, Scott? Doing great, thanks a lot. Scott's going to discuss today the top 10 reasons to sell your house right now and just give you some insight on, on why you should sell your house now versus waiting to the beginning of the year or sometime next year. Another reminder before we get started that if you have any questions regarding any topics we cover today, just call the off-air number and I will give you free advice. It's 877-245-2030. So we're going to jump into some business insights from last week. Uh, on Monday, over the weekend, Alan Greenspan had basically came out and said that the U.S. borrowing is uh, the borrowers are actually borrowing one third of what we spend. So basically, for every ten bucks we're spending right now, we're borrowing fifteen dollars. So it's out of control. It, it's very out of control, and I mean it, the the basics of it is is that we can't sustain that. Not for very long. <laughs> I, I, we keep you know basically pushing the kicking the bucket down the road. I think and until. I think both parties can come to some sort of agreement that spending needs to be cut and you just can't keep throwing billions and billions of dollars around. I don't, I, I'm, I'm really fearful for what can happen long term as far as inflation is concerned. Absolutely. And the, the question is, is where is that cutting of the spending going to come from? Absolutely. And they're, and they're on both sides of the fence and they can't come to an agreement on it. Yeah, and I think uh, relative to housing, I thought one of the interesting thing, things to note was that they were actually talking about getting rid of the mortgage interest deduction, which that would absolutely make zero sense. Yeah, it makes absolutely no sense at all. I mean, you have almost... It's going to kill property values even more. It kill property values and the people that are on the fence right now, whether they're you know upside down in their home, 20 to 25% in equity, if you though, then go and take their mortgage interest deduction away, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to walk away. Strategic defaults all over again. So we then extend the period from four to five years to seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road. Or longer. Or longer. Yeah, it just it boggles my mind. I mean, housing is considered to be about 20% of the overall economy. So if you take that 20% and then you just rip it out based upon just an interest deduction. Right. And there's 32 different industries get touched when somebody purchases a home. And it creates $68,000 in fees. So you take that out of the picture, you know, there's so many different people that are going to be affected by getting rid of that interest deduction. Absolutely. And I... I mean, this is just my personal opinion, but what I've been advocating for for a long time, the government basically owns Fannie and Freddie, okay? Absolutely. That's that's 80% of 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 the mortgages that are now out there on the market. Why can't they figure out a way to modify these loans to the going rate, and let's not even say the going rate, let's call 